Welcome back to the best entered apps of the month, this time for November 2025. First up, No Volume, an app that literally reinvents the volume bar and actually makes it a bit more useful. Instead of the usual bar slider, it gives you this really satisfying scroll wheel that just feels more natural when adjusting the volume, especially with one hand. It's super precise too, you can really fine tune it down to the exact percentage that you'd like. It's kind of like how some camera apps switched from a zoom slider to a scroll wheel. It's just a little bit more ergonomic to use. And if you're worried about it being too big or clunky, you can still customize everything about it, uh, including its size, position, colors, style, and a lot more. Plus, when you need to expand the volume panel, the regular old one pops up when necessary, like within phone calls. A quick shout out to a Reddit user named No App Studio who actually recommended this to me on my How To Men Reddit page. If you found a cool app or you created one that you think more people would like to learn about, feel free to post it on my Reddit page with uh, app in the title. And if it gets featured, I'll be sure to give you a shout out. Anyway, check out my status bar. I've got all these fun little animated characters playing around up there. Even this little Android bot dangling from my camera hole punch and swinging around as I move my phone around. I did this by using Umo. It basically gives you a whole bunch of these animated pets to choose from, just living on your status bar to make your phone feel more alive. You can choose to use a few or even just go all out with the whole zoo. And of course, you can even customize each one, like their size, placement, and even how fast they walk. And for two bucks, you can even upload any PNG file to add your own custom characters. That's how I was able to get this little Android guy on a rope. And don't worry, it hasn't really messed with my battery life at all and it never really gets in the way of any other apps. And hey, those are just two out of the 15 apps I got lined up for you for this month of the best apps. You guys know the deal, I'm just one guy hunting down all these hidden gems for you. And no, sorry PopMods team, as usual I didn't get it from you guys either. Pretty much most of these were released in the past month or so and have less than 10,000 downloads. I really do appreciate all the support you guys provided in the last episode. All your comments towards those false accusations really meant a lot. Once again, if you do end up downloading even one app from this entire list, all I ask is if you can just please drop a thumbs up. Last month we hit 13,000 likes, which is absolutely incredible. Maybe this month we can aim for 15,000? Let's see if we can do it. Anyway, let's be honest, Google doesn't make it easy to see all the data, info, and location history, it's just saving about you by default. I mean, sure, anyone can access their Google account information, but they pretty much hide most of the privacy settings across a ton of different pages, so it can get overwhelming if you don't know where to look. That's why I use this free open source app called Privacy Guard. It basically points you right to the settings you need so you can disable all that invasive stuff. It even lets you see and manage all the third-party apps that are connected to your Google account too. That way you can take control over everything that's going on, or at least most of it. And there's just a lot more where that comes from. I mean, you can just see here all the little different things that Google is saving about you that you probably didn't even know about. And you can just go in there and disable everything. All right, check this out. If I swipe up on the top left of my screen, I can control the brightness. But if I swipe from the top right, I can control the volume. And the best part is that I can still swipe from either of the sides to go back just like normal. I did all this with a free open source app called EdgeSeek and inside the app you can customize even more, like setting a long press to expand the status bar or changing exactly where those touch zones are. It just makes controlling your phone so much easier. Plus, it's super useful if your volume buttons are broken or are hard to reach. And by the way, check out this MagSafe dock that hides underneath my monitor. I use it all the time to literally mount any of my phones to it while I work. You can learn more about it by watching my latest Top Tech episode, which was released a few weeks ago. Not only that, but I also showed off a charging station to keep all of my tech organized, this cheap laptop extender that gives you two extra rotatable screens, and even this little gadget that mirrors your phone's screen to any TV. There's a lot more where that came from. I'll leave that video in the cards if you wanna check it out after watching this video. Okay, next is Flicky, which is a super clean and modern F-Droid client for your TV. That's right, if you don't know, F-Droid is this alternative app store full of free open source apps. It's a great place to find cool indie projects that you may not find on the Play Store. And what makes Flicky special is that it's totally designed with TVs in mind. The whole interface is optimized for the Android TV, so you can easily browse and sideload apps right from your couch using your remote. Uh, big icons, simple navigation, it just all feels smooth and easy to use on a big screen. But even on your phone, the UI is also surprisingly nice and clean. 
Um, it's very minimal too and still user friendly. If you want to get it on your TV, you can use apps like Local Send or the Downloader app by AFTV, which is what I used, or you can really just use any web browser too. So if you ever wanted a better way to download apps outside the Play Store on your TV, this is it. Next, finding a good document scanner is tough. I mean, they're often bloated with ads, subscriptions, and who knows what else. I used to use Microsoft Lens, but it lacked a crucial feature, the ability to make text in my PDFs searchable. That's why I switched to Paper AI. It's just as powerful, and it automatically crops and enhances your scans, and then it turns them into searchable PDFs, so that way you can search for the words. Plus, it'll even read your document to figure out nice details, like giving it a smart title, and then smart tags too. And like I said before, because it uses OCR, I can literally search for any word inside a document that I just scanned. Plus, even better, you can choose to process everything locally on your phone or even on their encrypted servers for free. That way, you can access all your scanned files between all of your different devices. So even if you lose your phone, your documents are still safe. It's honestly one of the few scanner apps that feels truly modern, clean, private, and it just works. Here's a clever one, Caffeine Clock. This app actually tracks how much caffeine is still in your system throughout the day. So you can time your coffee better and not wreck your sleep schedule. I started using it because I do tend to drink a ton of coffee. And honestly, I had no idea how long caffeine actually sticks around in your body. With this app, you just log what you drank. It actually has a wide variety of different coffees to choose from, even some from actual fast food joints or restaurants. And it gives you a life graph showing your caffeine levels dropping over time. It's not just random guessing either. It uses an algorithm that factors in how long caffeine takes to kick in and how quickly your body processes it uh, based on your weight, age, and gender, uh, and height as well. Even if you sip slowly over 30 minutes instead of downing it all at once, it adjusts for that as well. There's also analytics showing your daily caffeine intake and how close you are to drinking coffee and it affecting your sleep. It's such a smart idea, and honestly, it's one of those apps you don't realize you need until you start to use it. Senior Home Launcher is next, and I'm sure you guessed it from the title, it's a super simple launcher made for seniors. Or honestly, really for anyone who just wants a no-fuss layout. It turns the home screen into this calm, clean space that's really easy to navigate. The text is huge, the buttons are clear, and all the important stuff like the time, battery, your favorite apps, emergency contacts, certain settings like the flashlight are right there on the main screen. And to be honest, the interface just looks super clean and is well organized. I wouldn't even be surprised if just about anyone used it for their everyday launcher. It's got a really amazing looking UI. Next, if you're too addicted to your phone and you need some help to put it down, check out Reef, a screen time app that is completely free and open source and actually nails it. You can block distracting apps, set daily limits, and even turn on a focus mode where only the apps you actually need are available. You can also schedule automatic blocks during work hours or before bed, so you're not tempted to just mindlessly scroll. The stats are super useful too. You get a clear picture of where your time is going without any confusing menus to dig through. And it looks great with full material you theming, so it feels like it's just a natural part of your phone. It's simple, clean, and keeps you productive without any BS permissions or hidden paywalls. This next one's for anyone who's rocking an Android smartwatch. It's called Flattery, and it basically gives your Wear OS watch the same app launcher that you'd find on the Apple Watch. Instead of a list, you get all your app icons floating on a giant grid that you can scroll around and zoom in on with your, with your crown. You can even map the Flattery app to one of your side buttons on your watch to launch it more instantly. It's perfect for something like the Galaxy Watch that doesn't really have an app drawer like this. If you got your OnePlus watch though, you, you're already set, it's built right in. The only catch is that it's not on the Play Store, so you'll need to sideload it. Don't worry though, I'll leave a link in the description to a quick video tutorial that actually shows you how to get this set up using ADB. It's easier than it sounds. CS Security is a new antivirus app that I've been loving lately. Now, I don't usually review security apps because most of them are filled with ads and most of its features are locked behind a paywall, but this one's actually different. It's completely free with no ads and works completely offline with no account needed and it's made by an indie developer that just repairs phones for a living and built it for his customers. That's why it's completely free and community-based instead of being built around a business model. 
How it works is it uses ClamAV's open virus definitions for real scanning, not those fake quick scans that some apps pretend to do. It's especially handy if you're like me and you usually download apps from outside the Play Store and aren't sure whether they have hidden malware. You just never know. So CS Security comes in handy for that. Plus, it even has a built-in cleaner to help you remove old files, duplicates, unused apps, or any other unnecessary stuff that's taking up your storage space. Definitely give it a try. Another unique one is Toolkit Tiles. It's a free open source app that adds a bunch of extra handy tools right into your quick settings panel. We're talking about a tally counter, a compass, a bubble level, one to roll the dice, coin flip, an SOS flashlight signal, even a one tap screenshot button. There's a whole bunch more where that came from. And I know they're not the fanciest tiles you'll ever use, but I'm sure you'll find one or two that will come in handy once in a while. Save it later is for anyone who's always finding cool stuff online, but can never really remember where they saved it. You know how it is. You see a great video or an article, you save it inside the app, and then you totally forget about it forever. This app fixes that because it really saves everything into one easy spot to find with a really clean looking UI. It lets you save anything with the link, including videos, social posts, songs, articles, you name it, um, from literally any app too. And then it lets you organize them in collections and save favorites as well. Plus you can even paste multiple URLs at once to have them all be saved instantly. Uh, comes in handy when someone texts you like a wish list or something. And everything can be synced between all your Android and iOS devices. Uh, the only catch is that it does have a few ads and some of the features like customizing how the, uh, how the articles look or syncing across other devices are really hidden behind a monthly paywall of just a dollar. But other than that, the basics for saving things are all completely free. If you take a bunch of screenshots like I do and they always end up cluttering your gallery, you've got to check out Mark. Here's how it works. Every time you take a screenshot, a little pop-up appears, and then you can choose what to do with it. You can either keep it, or my favorite part is that you can set it to auto-delete after a certain amount of time, like 15 minutes, a couple of hours, or even a few days later. It runs quietly in the background too, keeping your phone tidy without you ever needing to think about it. Super lightweight, super simple. Uh, plus the only catch is that it does have a few ads, but honestly, they're not that bad. It's totally worth it for how much it cleans up my gallery. You know, one of the things I really like about Samsung phones, when you play music, you get this little glanceable pill in the corner that you can tap to quickly control your music. Well, I recently found an app called Live Media that brings that same exact feature to any Android phone running Android 16. It uses Android's new live update notification to put a persistent interactive media control right in your status bar. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you scrub through the track, but you can't see the progress and it doesn't look quite as polished as the Samsung version, but for basic play, pause and skipping, it works just fine. Anyway, if you want to see more, tap this playlist right here to catch the previous best app videos or hit this card right here to check out my top tech video where I go over some really cool gadgets that can level up your setup. And if you end up downloading even one app from today's list, Drop a quick thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Thanks so much for watching till the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!